Hey all, this is Flight of Icarus with MetalTrenches.com. If you haven't already, please do subscribe to the channel and give us a like if you enjoy the content. So that said, here's 11 post-black bands that fans of Death Heaven should be aware of and absolutely deserve your attention. So first up, I already mentioned them, Numenorian. This is a band out of Calgary, Alberta. They definitely hit the scene hard with their breakthrough album, Home. Now, obviously, these guys have just dropped a new album at the time of recording. I have not heard it yet, but by the time I put this up, it probably will be out. Judging from the singles I've heard, I am very impressed. I think that this will be a giant leap forward for them. I hear some massive growth in the songwriting, a lot of maturation. There's definitely some more kind of progressive elements coming in there. I was even getting some Gojira vibes, so definitely check Numenorian out if you have not already. Next up, we've got Underdark, which is a UK band. These guys really know how to take scathing black metal vocals and very heavy instrumentation and turn it into a really highly emotive catharsis. I am so impressed with how many feelings are conveyed across just the three songs on their latest release, which is called Morning Cloak. Right, then we've got Siberian act Ultar, who released their debut album, Kadath. This was an album that was inspired by the works of H.P. Lovecraft, popular topic lately, especially 2018, a lot of like Lovecraftian releases. Very atmospheric, also very melodic. And while we get the usual kind of reverb-washed mandolins sounding guitar tremolo that is so tightly associated with post-black, Kadath also takes a pure aesthetic approach with more ambient nature sounds and things of that nature to step up the atmosphere in different ways, like on Shores of the Sleeping Seas. All right, then we've got Underling, which is a bit of a super group out of Northern California. It has members of Volusia, Archaic, Battlecross, Wrath, and Sidian. So quite an interesting cross-section of different things there. You've got people from the tech death and progressive death world. You've got mathcore post-hardcore with Wrath. Um, and that really does come together to create this hodgepodge of something that is absolutely different in the genre. There's a lot of variety here that definitely transcends and steps outside of that post-black label. Blood Worship is a fantastic album. I enjoyed it greatly. I really need to go back and listen to it again because it's been a little while. Next, we've got Danish band Mall. This was a more recent outing for me, and it's so good. It totally hit me in all the right places. One of the things I really appreciate in a post-black band is that they do not skimp on still having very harsh, grim black metal vocals. And Maul definitely gets that right. You hear it from the very beginning with the opening track, Storm. And then they've got some super violent guitars, too, like on Vacuum. So lots of strong, grounded black metal roots on here in addition to stepping up into the more melodic realm. All right, pulling back a bit further, we've got Lithuanian band Audesis. This is another band that has a very kind of traditional black metal aesthetic, right down to wearing hoods and obscuring their faces. This is probably 
ultimately the most black metal band on this list. Because again, they've got those very post metal elements. They've got those melodic pieces. But for every one of those, there's a much more ferocious counterpart. Songs will often start off with a really dark tone and then evolve into something that is more melodic, or sometimes it's the flip side. Great production, very deep, very heavy, excellent vocals, very harsh, and they've just got a nice dichotomy that provides a lot of dynamics and range. Great songwriting skills. I'm actually partial to their debut self-titled album, more so than the follow-up end of chapter, but they're both worth checking out. All right, taking a proggy turn here with Archivist, which is a multinational group that has members from Austria, England, and Germany. But this is a very concept-driven sci-fi group, the story of the last survivor of Earth who's now like stowed away in an escape pod and his journey. They put out two albums so far. The latest one was Construct. This is another band where I prefer the first album so far, which was just called Archivist. It kind of reminds me of taking like sort of the Coheed and Cambria conceptual story elements, but then putting it to more of a post-black sound, but there's also a bit of a progressive spin on it. It feels very big, very profound, very emotional, and also very fittingly tragic. I stand upon the- All right, this next band has gone through some significant changes because they're now just called ThatNet, and they've dropped pretty much all of their metal elements. But previously, they were known as ThatNet Viscar, and they had a great album that lots of people were talking about in 2015. It was one of my favorites called Settler. It was a very solid album. This was one of the first albums that made me start thinking about this entire concept because I heard Deaf Heaven, Sunbather, and then not long after I heard this and I was like, ooh, I like this better. They've got some interesting groove elements that even made me think about like deaf tones. They've got more just crater-inducing aggressive tracks. One of my personal favorites, Impact, is one that I like to listen to on a regular basis. Basis. So I was kind of bummed that they changed direction. It's fine. That's their choice. But I was really excited to see kind of what was going to happen moving forward from Settler. And, you know, maybe they'll do it again in the future. But as you can see from this list, there's plenty of other people to fill that gap. All right, we've got New York band So Hideous, who combine elements of post-hardcore, post-rock, alternative, that very tenuous grip on black metal. And this is where this is where I even kind of pick on the post-black label sometimes, because I feel like a lot of these bands are really just post-hardcore bands that are just a little bit more edgy, a little bit more harsh, just enough so to kind of sneak in that black into the label whereas most black metal fans i think would kind of roll their eyes at it but in any case very solid band they take a more symphonic approach especially on the album laura stein where even from the beginning of the songwriting each song began as a piano piece that they built orchestration on top of and layered and layered out and then they added the guitars bass and drums so it's really more kind of classical instrumentation first and foremost. And they actually utilized a 30-piece orchestra for this one, and it creates a huge sound. Like, this is a huge-sounding album that's just, like, constantly spiraling, very mournful, harsh vocals that are an interesting counterpoint to the more lush, beautiful instrumentation. Absolutely stunning, very unique experience. I haven't really heard another album quite like this one, especially in the genre. I 
Out of Vermont, we've got Barishi, which is another band that's kind of gone beyond just the post-black label. I, I use that term very loosely with them. They have a very unique, eclectic sound that combines the likes of Deftones. I hear kind of similar elements as Vatnet Viscar, but I also hear like Glassjaw. I hear some Wrath kind of all over the place. Like these guys don't really seem to be interested in fitting into some particular niche. They're just doing their own thing. Sasha's black and vocals are plenty harsh throughout, but the music at any given moment is really what determines how those songs come across. Post-black, post-metal, sludge, progressive, experimental, all this seems equally applicable. And I was already very impressed with their debut album, but they followed this up on Season of Mist with Blood from the Lion's Mouth, which was excellent. Another one of my favorite albums of that year. And last but not least, definitely the most unique band on this list, Botanist. This is a one-man project that, instead of utilizing guitars, utilizes hammered dulcimer, which is an instrument that you may not be aware of. You might have to look it up. There's kind of a meme that I've helped perpetuate about how Metal Archives refuses to add botanist to the site because they say that they're not metal. And when people asked, well, why are they not metal? They basically said, well, because they don't have guitars. <laughs> I think that's absolutely outrageous. Uh, to be fair to them, I think there was some more stuff that went into that, but it just seems like splitting hairs because this is still a very heavy band. They have a very black metal aesthetic, or he, I should say, has a very black metal aesthetic. Haunt Haunting, absolutely haunting music is probably the best way I can describe it. And a lot of it conceptually deals around nature and plant life. And you'll even see that in the album artwork, which is often also just as beautiful as the music is. It's a hard band to describe in terms of their actual sound. But they create this effect of kind of like strings and percussion. It has a very dreamlike, ethereal quality. And 100%... If you're interested in any kind of underground, heavier music, Botanist is a band that you should know. So that's it. Those are 11 post-black and kind of beyond bands that I think are well worthy of your attention if you like Deaf Heaven or if you just like post-black music as a whole. Once more, please do subscribe to the channel. And if you enjoyed this video, please do hit the like button, share it, get other people to subscribe. But this is Flight of Icarus signing off. I will see you in the trenches. <laughs>